All right, uh, well, what you're looking at here is the EMR2 from Kafaro International for 2014. We did a video a couple minutes ago comparing it to a High Camp 7000. We did uh, change the size of this. It was pretty daunting for guys uh, hearing those 9,000 cubic inch uh, uh, different claims we had. And we, we have some prototypes that big. We did shrink down the main bag to put it in perspective, slightly smaller than a High Camp 7000. Um, not quite as tall as a Timberline 1, but as big around as a High Camp 7000 is. And the thinking behind that, we more or less give you the option of carrying any bear cape moose quarter by allowing this zipper to come all the way down and expanding, leaving it unzipped and the horizontal compression straps holding it in place. I'm super excited about this pack just because this is my kind of of pack with the options it has, and I'll go over like all of those right now. Uh, we've got a two-way zipper, and obviously it's covered. This is slick as can be. The way that um, Janice more or less developed a um, a you know, a way to keep like snow, ice, grit, things like that off the zipper. So you got three horizontal compression straps, a two-way zipper, and then you can come down from the top. And that gives you a top loader and a frontal loader, or leave it wide open for a large expansion for a bear cape. The horizontal compression straps, you can take those off and only run two or whatever you need uh, if you want to save some weight or what have you. You've got the two pockets back here. Now these are perfect. We brought some samples for stuff. That's a big Nalgene bottle right here. You can also run... This is a Gitzo Mountaineer tripod. The one that um, Eric's using on the camera is the CT Traveler from Swarovski. Those will all fit in here. You've got draw cords on both. This is my possible pouch. Water uh, drops in there, mole skin, all that kind of stuff. Fits that perfectly in one of our pullouts. Over here, this is a Katadin Hiker Pro water pump. And that fits inside as well. So things you need to get to quickly right there. Obviously use your imagination. You can run just about anything you want. This is my little butt pad for when I'm blasting. You could run that in there. Skis, snowshoes, sky's the limit. Get those out of there. Both sides are identical as far as the wings. So you've got 1200 cubic inches in the zippered pocket. This is about 800 cubic inches. Now if you just run a bladder in this and compress it, it doesn't really kick out very bad at all. It's, it's, it's fine. If you run hard goods in all these pockets, it, it will obviously expand out a little bit and uh, leave these a little bit wider for you. But this sleeve, it'll hold same tripods without an issue. No problem whatsoever. For me, this is an MSR 4 liter bladder. And I like to run this in here because I can get to it quickly. And we've like overstuffed the zippered pocket, but this will still fit inside without a problem. You, when you do this, you basically have like the um, option of yanking the bladder out quickly when you need to fill it up. So we got the hose sticking out. This still compresses fairly well, so it's not an overly wide pack. So once the compression straps are on there, works great for that. Now, you can also run at the same time if you wanted, you could wrap this foam pad around your spotter, put it in there as well. There's a lot of options. Right here, we've got another sleeve. Uh, in this, there's no billowing or expansion for this sleeve. This is your map pocket, cell phone, things like that. But you can also, if you wanted to, with this thing completely stuffed, you can run, there we go, you can run your tripod in there. This will cover it up. Now, obviously, the more stuff you run in these sleeves, the wider the bag is going to get when the main bag is full. So something to think about. But you can, depending upon what's in, the, in these pockets, you can compress around it. It just depends on how you run it. Some of the other options right here is the option to run our gun cradle or gun scabbard so you can 
have the option of running the butt of the gun above the bottom of the pack or below it. This pocket covers the scope and the action so it doesn't get damaged while you're traveling. You can also run our belt pouches right here. You could put the gut butt of the gun inside that same way as a cradle. Not an issue at all whatsoever. So you have multiple options with this. We took all the information over the last several years, um, you know, with the packs we'd made before, the timber lines, the EMRs, and created a, an amazing extended mission rucksack for tactical guys and hunters with all these different options. You can take an M4 and fit it in here just like you can the Nomad. And, you know, if you keep this bare, run it inside this sleeve, it'll stick up a little bit above your head, so that's an option. Fits on the bikini, it's on the bikini frame right now. It'll fit on the bikini or the hunting platform or the tactical platform frame. So, you're looking, give or take, um, 5,800 to 6,000 cubic inches in this main bag, 1,200 per each zipper pocket, 800 in the sleeve, and another, oh, 400 cubic inches here. Um, I had to look at Janice to make sure she's the one that built these, uh, her and Eric. So 400 cubic inches here. So it's not in, like an, oh my God, look at this giant pack. This is, is basically what I'll be running in place of my Timberline 1. Um, you know, same, same type of uh, concept behind it. You know, with the Timberline 1, a lot of guys ended up running that for day hunts. One, two, three, seven, ten, whatever days. This is the same idea. We shrunk it down a little bit from the original model uh, just for the fact it has the overload capability, and that was the big reason for making that big bag. So, either way, this is the Kefaru EMR2 for 2014.